Welcome to the Ogles Challenge. Today we're going to talk about an incredibly difficult game called Unto the End. And I hate it. I hate that I hate it, but I genuinely do hate the game. And it's sad because I generally really like difficult games because it's so rewarding when you finally beat an area or when you finally beat a boss. But this game, it doesn't feel like that. It feels more like a chore that you're sort of wading your way through, hoping for it to finally come to an end. But before we go too far into that, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. We are near 1,000 subscribers, and there's a giveaway for a AAA game or a game of your choice at that mark. So make sure you click it down below. But back to Under the End. Now, I came across this game at eShop about a month or so ago, and it looked like the side scroll and action of and Sanctuary mixed with the artistic style of Ashen, and naturally I'm a sucker for any Souls-like game, so of course I had to give it a try. Now, I was not at all prepared for what the game had to offer next. <laughs> Never have I died this many times in a video game before. Seriously, the first night I played for about two hours and I did not beat a single enemy in those two hours. And I'm not talking about a single boss in those two hours. I'm talking about a single enemy at all. The Goombas, the Koopa Troopas, that kind of enemy. Nothing in two hours. And the reason for this is the combat in the game is incredibly difficult to master. If they tried very hard to make it realistic, but by doing that, they made it incredibly difficult difficult. The fighting in the game makes every single encounter feel like you are in a tournament fighter just simply without the special moves. You can block high, you can block low, you can counter high, you can counter low, you can make your enemies flinch. When you have them to flinch, attack them in the opposite direction. You can block chain attacks, you can punish chain attacks, you can roll through them. This is a very difficult combat system to master and they expect you to have it mastered at the start of the game. It's not a slow introduction, Every bit of this combat is required by the time you meet the very first enemy in the game. This is probably the steepest learning curve of any game that I've played. But not only is the combat difficult to just master on how to block and how to attack and things like that, also when you're fighting, when you get hit, you drop your weapon sometimes. And when you drop your weapon, you're defenseless and you have to take the time to bend down, pick your weapon up, and naturally while you're doing that, you're going to be attacked some more and of course, your death comes to an untimely end. Wait, your life comes to an untimely end, meeting your death, which is just a key aspect of this game in general, death. But attacks aren't the only way to die in this game. It is littered with perfectly timed jumps, traps galore, and to top it all off, you don't even see the traps half the time because the game is so poorly lit throughout the entire experience. The only way to combat that poorly lit environment is to have your torch equipped which doesn't seem like that big of a deal. You can craft your torch with your supplies, but anytime you fall, you drop the torch. Anytime you trip, you drop the torch. Anytime you're attacked, you drop the torch. Anytime you use a two-hand attack, you drop the torch. You are constantly dropping the torch inside this game. Now, is that realistic? Well, yes, of course it's realistic. If I were to fall and trip, I'm probably gonna drop the torch I'm holding. However, sometimes in a game, realism does not equal the most fun. The game is also difficult on just simply the exploration of the game in general. Early on in the game, you're going to encounter a door with a keyhole in it, but naturally, you don't have a key to open it with. So after wandering around for a bit, you do find an old fella to offer things to, as if some sort of trade is about to happen. I offered him herbs, I offered him sticks, I even offered him some hair I had found, I offered him literally everything I had in my inventory, and nothing happened. Out of annoyance, I finally decided to just kill the guy, and poof, the key appeared. So that made me question, why allow me to trade all my items away to this fella if nothing's going to happen and I have to kill him anyway? It just caused me to waste my items. This is true throughout the entire game. It's often halted by little puzzles to figure out, trades to do, and it's always very cryptic on just sort of what you're supposed to do and where you're supposed to go in relation to that. And I am all for cryptic games. I actually like old school Nintendo cryptic games. However, when you've already got a extremely complex combat system that you die constantly with, and you have a lighting system in the game where you are constantly dying from, and you have traps and you know jumps you are constantly dying for, when you come across the crypticness, your annoyance level is already pretty high, and it just leads to wanting to quit the game. Now, obviously, I don't like this game. However, for the very same reasons that I listed of not liking this game, it might be the exact same reasons that you want to purchase this game, because we all have different limits on where we say challenge crosses that line between fun and annoyance. For example, I love the From Software games, but many players feel that they are too hard to be rewarding. But I would argue that Unto the End 
has issues with rewarding players in general for their struggles in advancing, because I never really felt rewarded after defeating a challenge. There was no leveling up, there were no new weapons to get, really no reward at all except another challenge to follow shortly ahead. I just think difficult games need more rewards to keep the players engaged. Outside of this, the game mechanics are not poorly designed at all. It's just designed for a very, very, very specific player in mind who enjoys difficult games for the sake of a difficult game and it doesn't mind not having a lot of rewards. Now all the earlier issues can be debated back and forth between pros and cons of the game depending on your individual playing style and if you like that type of game. There are some universal issues that I have with the game that I think most players would agree on regardless of which style that you enjoy. And the first one we talk about is just simply the title screen or the loading screen. When the game loads up, it just simply says, unto the end. And you don't really know what's going on. Is this a loading screen? Is it a title screen? So you press start, you press, you know, X, you press A, and nothing happens. And after about 30 seconds, I thought the game just simply froze up. I closed it out, ended software, started back up. Once again, title screen only. Couldn't do anything. 30 seconds, closed the game out, loaded it back up, and this time I waited a little bit longer. After 48 seconds, the game finally loaded. Now, that's a long time for a 2D game to load, but that's not really my issue with that. My issue is they put a screen up there. It didn't say loading, it didn't say waiting, it didn't say initializing, it didn't say anything. And you think the hardware is frozen or you think the hardware has crashed because of that. They need to add something on that loading screen to let you know that it's a loading screen and the game just simply hasn't frozen. Pretty much all games have that if they have a long loading screen. That needs to be added into this game or just simply lower the loading times. Now the second universal issue out of the game is going to be the story of the game. And perhaps I completely missed the story, but to me it was just simply a guy who went hunting, fell in a hole, met some weird creatures who tried to kill him. There's probably a few more details of the story here and there, but for the most part, that was just simply the story. There's no background lore you really get to explore. There's not a lot of narration to keep it going along. The story just seems very um, poorly developed in my opinion and also just sort of a weak story in general. I would like to have seen a much more developed story when it comes to that. Final thoughts on the game though. I would honestly not recommend this game to 99% of players out there. And I say this because this is a very niche game inside of a very niche community. Because it's a very difficult game that even players that like difficult games may not like. And I say that because I'm part of that category that likes those difficult games and I didn't like this game. So this game is really appealing to a very, very small crowd. So it'd be difficult for me to recommend it for you to buy, especially at the price that it is. And I'll put the price down here in the bottom since I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. But it's not a super cheap game. And so I really wouldn't recommend, even when it goes on sale, I probably wouldn't recommend purchasing this game unless you just simply know that you love difficult games with very little reward to it. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below if you purchased the game, what you thought were some pros and cons, or if you're thinking about purchasing the game, what are your thoughts and the reasons why you want to purchase this game. But anyway, go out there, find a great game to play, and just simply have a great rest of the day.